Well, hello everybody and welcome to Captain Mac Live. Obviously a very special episode on this live stream today. We are announcing the launch of MacAirVirtual.com and that was the official promotional video and this is the first time it's ever been shown to the public and I hope that you guys really enjoyed it. I got uh, my man Eric texting me on the thing here I got all kinds of stuff going on it's all kinds of craziness here uh, obviously we had a little problem the internet was acting up a little bit when I was getting ready to kick things off there figures right I haven't been live in a while and as soon as I get ready to go live the internet wants to act up we need to get some light over here so you can see my pretty face uh, so there you have it so let's let's kick this off I want to do a couple of shout outs here I want to give a little shout out to uh, little shit you know who you are and I want to give some special shout outs uh, first and foremost to my man Eric Easy Grindstaff he is the COO or the vice president whichever you prefer of Mac Air Virtual and yours truly Captain Mac is the president of Mac Air Virtual and we're going to talk a whole lot about that that's the whole point in today's live stream I'd also like to give a shout out to uh, my man and Jerry from Mirage Executive Charters. He helped us out a lot as we were uh, as we were building the virtual airline here. So did Abrar and Pat and a whole bunch of other guys. I can't even think of all the names right now. So my sincere apologies. But I will bet you, my man Eric's got everybody's name on a list. So maybe Eric, you could do me a favor and write down there in the chat. You could uh, give a special thank you to all of those folks. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, they helped us out with beta testing of the website, uh, making sure everything was working properly, and the whole nine yards. So what we have at Mac Air is different than any other virtual airline you've ever experienced. And let me show you what we're talking about here. There you have it. This is our uh, website here. And uh, all kinds of cool stuff going on. There's a lot to go through here, and that's kind of what I want to do today, is I want to talk a little bit about the website and break down what Mac Air is really all about. So let's start with that right there. Uh, my friend Eric and I, we talked about this for a few years, believe it or not, and uh, you know, we thought to ourselves, both of us like to fly the old aircraft, we both like to fly the new aircraft, uh, sometimes we like to just get in whatever we want and fly, and other times we like something that's really strict and quite structured. And the problem is, is there's not a virtual airline out there that actually offers all of that right so you've got virtual airlines that are sort of an open policy where you show up you can have zero hours and you can jump right in that 747 and away you go and you can fly from wherever you want to start to wherever your destination is and then let's say, let's say you land in Phoenix because everybody knows other Phoenix and now I want to fly out of Denver well it doesn't matter I just take my next flight from Denver it doesn't cost me any hours nothing like that I just go where I want when I want and so on uh, and then there's other airlines out there that say listen uh, we, we've got a strict structure you must fly from point A to point B and then from point B to point C and C to D and so on you cannot depart from a different airport than what you arrived at uh, there's uh, stricter standards for how you how you conduct your flights uh, some of them even go so far as to have uh, a limit on the aircraft you can fly based on your rank and then there's those out there that are strictly devoted to historical aircraft and uh, there's a lot of folks uh, either watching here on the live stream a lot of folks that watch my channel I get some great feedback on um, my flights in this aircraft right here actually the uh, the Constellation which is really a cool aircraft uh, and so there's a lot of folks that really like those old airplanes uh, even all the way up into the jet age as you saw in the promo video there so what we did at Mac Air what what myself and uh, Eric sat down we said you know what uh, why don't we create an airline that has all of them and so that's what we did and it's been a long time in the making now I think we've been at it for a little over six months now trying to put everything together trying to build the website <coughs> um, boy let me tell you this was not easy this has never been done before so the way it works is you have one profile so in this case you can see here I'm logged in this is my profile and uh, I'll, if I go to my profile page here you can see there it is that's me Captain Mac right and I didn't have to do like I did over at PVA where uh, I had to create a new profile this is my profile here but under this single profile I can fly all three divisions at Mac Air and that's one of the beautiful things about what we've got going on here and you can see right here I just click on divisions and there you have it open division professional division and historical division we've got all three of them here at Mac Air which 
again nobody else has ever even tried it so and we actually have intention at some point to add some more divisions uh, but that's gonna be way down the road but what I'd like to focus on right now is what we have here so as you saw in our little promo video which I think was a pretty good video myself uh, in your open division you can fly what you want when you want where you want from wherever you want doesn't matter it's a, it's a standard open policy you come in on day one everybody is automatically assigned to the open division now you can be assigned to all three divisions at the same time by the way you don't have to just fly one of the three you don't have to well I'm only gonna fly open or I only want to fly professional so on it doesn't work that way you can fly any of the three divisions at any time at Mac Air with one exception and I'll get to that here in a little bit so you're automatically assigned to the open division when you join Mac Air Virtual. And what that means is you come in zero hours, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what hours you have elsewhere, it just doesn't matter because you can fly anything. You fly 747, A380, or a little Cessna, you can pick a location, find a route, and off you go. Okay. So if we go into our open division, I'm just just real quick looking here, okay? So this is my profile information on open division. You can see there's 12 current members. These are all individuals who've helped us to build this virtual airline. Uh, we're very appreciative to all of them, and they all are basically plank holders uh, here at Mac Air, and, and so we really appreciate it. And that reminds me, I wanted to throw a shout out to my man Stuart, the jester. Good sir, thank you for all your help. He's he's been a huge help uh, to me and Eric through the years on a lot of different things. So I definitely want to get a shout out to him. But uh, these guys are all signed up already because they helped us uh, helped us beta test and put everything together, and uh, we really appreciate that. And so we wanted to make sure that they got those early numbers at Mac Air. And for the rest of you, I should go ahead and mention this right now. This is our official launch uh, live stream here. Really excited about it, but. Technically, the official launch is going to be on July 4th, which means you can sign up for Mac Air right now, but no applications will be processed until the 4th of July. So Eric's sitting on here, and he's probably thinking to himself, oh, God, I'm going to get a lot of them. But hey, bring them rolling in, folks, because we're looking forward to having you there. But back to what we're talking about over here. So you can see here's my details. I've got no pie reps, no hours, no miles flown, nothing. I haven't flown anything here yet. I did when we were testing, but we cleared it all out, and here we go, right? Okay, so let's click on view schedules. Do do do. My internet's really being a pain in the butt. Uh, that's driving me nuts. Now I can search my schedules by departure, arrival, aircraft, and so on. Uh, and then of course I've got all the schedules listed down here as well. And so for the open division, it just they're just listed out, plain and simple. So starting Mac one ten, you can see you can see they're going in in a kind of an odd order here. We have over three hundred and fifty thousand routes at Mac Air that's not a joke over 350,000 routes so there's a lot going on here so you definitely might want to use your search function uh, to pick what flight you're going to in the open division so I can pick any departure I want standard search function everybody knows how to use this you can either uh, scroll down until you find what you're looking for or we can type it in there it is Phoenix Sky Harbor and I can pick departures from there and I can search just that so I don't want to search anything else. I just want to search departures out of Phoenix. That's where I want to start. And so there you go. You'll notice that our flight numbers, we have really high numbers. That's because of because of the way we design this <coughs> website, because we're doing three separate divisions. Uh, flight numbers and stuff like that, were they, they were a huge hurdle, actually, uh, much larger than we anticipated. And so the easiest solution was simply to list them in sequential order, which means you've got flight number 358,000 whatever. It's, it's a big flight number, but whatever. Who cares? I don't really care. <laughs> and I'm sure that you don't either. So I can pick any one of these flights here. Again, open division right I can fly whatever I want wherever I want whenever I want so I pick a flight add it to my bid just like you would anywhere else I can get a pilot briefing if I want I can view details on the flight there you go gives us a little map all of that good stuff and then I bid on the flight just like you do with any other virtual airline very simple very straightforward easy right let's go back to the home page here real quick there's a little note down here. We're going to get to this. Uh, we'll just jump to this right now. Let's talk. Let's talk next about the professional division. All right. The open division is pretty straightforward. I think everybody can understand that pretty easy. In fact, let me jump over to the comments here and see if anybody's got any questions so far. Pat's here. Fantastic. Uh, Eric's on there. He's Mac Air CEO. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Profile page shows your stats for each division separately. Our system tracks your hours, distance, rank, etc. for each division. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to impress upon that, guys. When you go into your profile page, all right, uh, and I wasn't 
I didn't finish everything in the profile page. I went right to the divisions. I, I didn't really script this out. I just figured we'll just bounce around and do our thing, right? So this is my profile. I went to divisions, but here's my open division statistics, right? And then I've got uh, all my, this is all stuff for open division. Then I've got professional division and historical division. I'm not a member of either of these yet because I haven't signed up. We're going to have some, uh, some video content that's going to be a part of this. Who is, oh, Apparently my heart rate's up because my watch is saying that I'm exercising right now. <laughs> I'm actually a little nervous about this live stream. This is really an exciting moment for us. So I think this is fantastic. But uh, jumping back over to the home page real quick. And now we're going to start talking a little bit about the professional division. Actually, we're going to talk quite a bit about the professional di division because this is the most complex aspect of Mac Air. So there are those of you who are watching this right now and you're thinking, you know what? Open division is for me. That's that's what I like to do. I like to hop into an aircraft, whatever airplane I feel like flying today. Or maybe you're the you know maybe you're one of those folks out there who says, listen, I bought PMDG triple seven and that's all I ever fly. That's my favorite airplane in the world and I won't fly anything else. Not a problem. We've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of flights in the triple seven and you can fly every one of them and you can enjoy it to your heart's content. Um, but there's going to be those of you on here who really want something structured, something that focuses more towards realism. It is a simulation after all and there are those of us out there who really want to try and get a feel for flying in the real world as much as we can on a computer anyway. And that's what our professional division is all about. And we fully intend to expand upon our professional division, uh, add to it, uh, all kinds of stuff we're going to add to it. My watch is driving me nuts, guys. Um, <clears throat> I'll bet you that's easy. Watch. There it is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll talk about the substitution charts, uh, Eric. Don't worry about that. He just texted me, told me, don't forget to mention the sub charts. Um, the sub charts, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll talk about that for one second because I will forget otherwise. What are the sub charts? Substitution chart. I got to find them now. <laughs> I forget where we put them. Oh, they're going to be in the forums. That's where the sub charts are going to be. We're not going to go to the forums right now. We'll get to there eventually, okay? Because we do have our own forums, of course, as well. I want to talk about the Pro Division because this is this is my baby right here, the Pro Division. And the Pro Division is a very, very strict layout, okay? And we try to model it a little more after the real world. What do I mean by that? Well, you start out as a private pilot and then you work on your instrument rating and then you work on your multi-engine. Now, to a certain extent, eh, you know, it's not it's not quite what the real world is, you know, and you'll see that here in a minute, but but the rank structure follows real world rank structure a little bit more closely. Um, and the idea, of course, is that uh, it's difficult. It's not easy. It's not going to be for everybody. I'm getting texts again. <laughs> oh, they're in the download center. Okay. Um, where was I? Oh, it's, it's not going to be for everybody. There are those of you on here, you don't stand a chance in the professional division. It's not going to be for you. I, I can tell you that right now. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And then there are those of you on here who will just tear through it like it's awesome. So let's take a look at the pro division real quick. Let's go back over to our profile page and click on divisions. And let's go to the professional division. Now it's going to tell me that I, I'm not a member of the professional division right now. Okay. First of all, in order to be... Uh, not to be in order to have an application accepted for the professional division you must fly 25 hours in either the open or the historic division combined it can be both of them uh, when you apply for the historic division the only requirement is that you apply that's it uh, but for the professional division you have to have 25 hours of flight time with Mac Air before you can apply now some of you think well that's ridiculous well maybe it is maybe it isn't but uh, the professional division is not your standard virtual airline layout and uh, you got to read through this here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my application right now because uh, we're going to have um, we're going to have videos that are going to work our way through the professional division um, coming up here pretty soon. Hopefully, we'll be starting that pretty soon. But basically, what we have here is we got a pretty long-winded thing written out here, but it's very important that you read this. Okay, you have to read through this thing because if you don't follow what's outlined in this thing written right here in this, this these paragraphs you can be removed from the professional division okay we we if you're not following the rules we're gonna pull you out okay and we expect you to behave a certain way you know how you interact in the forums not acting like a fool stuff like that all that stuff's outlined in here and it's important that you read it in addition uh, and let me scroll down and find it here we've got 
what it actually takes to advance through the professional division. That's what I want to talk about right now. I want to outline just how difficult of a ride this is going to be. So private pilot is at zero hours, right? So you have no hours. You're a private pilot, okay? In order to actually get your private pilot rating with Mac Air, you've already got your 25 hours in the open or historic division. You've applied for uh, the professional division. Your application has been accepted. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take a written exam. And some of you are going, what? Yeah, you're going to take a written exam that's going to have questions based on real world questions for uh, for flight in general. So even all the way up through airline transport pilot, it's not, you know, we didn't specify questions that are only for airline transport pilot or anything like that. But what we did is we we brought forth questions or we put questions in here that relate to real world aviation. And some of them are very simple and some of them are not so simple. But you have to pass your written exam with an 85% or higher in order to be eligible to move forward. Now, once you pass your initial written exam, you're going to be given access to a very, very short list of flights. I think it's three or four of them for private pilot, and they are training flights. And you're going to want to take advantage of those training flights. They're going to be uh, laid out in such a way that they're going to prepare you essentially for the check ride. Now, nobody's going to be with you on the training flights. How you deal with a training flight is entirely up to you. You can go out there and just fly it to say I flew it, or you can actually put the time into trying to fly that flight properly. But once you're ready, you're going to put in a request to take a check ride, an actual check ride. This is not something that's simply tracked by A cars, but instead, you're going to log on to a program called Team Viewer, which is free to download, and you can remove it from your computer when you're done. In fact, I think there's even a way to run it where you don't have to download it, but I'm not 100% positive on that. Eric can answer that question for sure. But either way, you're going to use Team Viewer, and an examiner, myself, uh, Eric, or one of our staff members, is actually going to log on to team viewer and you're going to go through a whole process an entire check ride while being observed by an examiner and they're going to grade you they got a grading sheet and if you if you don't pass that check ride guess what more training flights <laughs> but if you pass the check ride all right that's where it starts to get uh, to be a lot of fun okay so you you pass your check ride and you'll have access to flights in aircraft such as the Cessna 172 a Piper Archer uh, or any other single engine fixed pitch propeller and it says right here if you don't know what a fixed pitch propeller is you aren't ready for the professional division I'm telling you right now okay if you don't know what a fixed pitch propeller is you might and you want to fly professional division you might want to go study up on real world aviation a little bit because you're gonna to need to know stuff like that okay so you'll have access to fixed pitch propeller aircraft and uh, it's it talks about the substitution chart here uh, let me see if I can uh, let's see let's see if I can open this in a new tab here let's go to download center here real quick and you can see our down we've got our air a cars in here uh, pilots operating handbook uh, what else we got I'm looking for my here we go substitution charts right so this is historic division and this is professional division so let me download this one real quick I don't have it downloaded because I already know what it is right download download anyway <laughs> start the download and open the file alright that was fun let's pull that up here for you directory is not valid okay so Eric for some reason that didn't work <laughs> that's okay though I've got a solution because we do have it listed in the forums I just have to find it now under important pilot documents I'm quite certain professional division aircraft substitution chart and it should just be listed out in here so here you go private pilot airframes okay uh, 402C, A140, Beach Light Aircraft. You can see they're all listed in here. So if it's listed in this column over here, anything that's next to it, you can fly for that, right? So it's pretty simple, actually. If you have a flight in a Y112 or a Y12, you can fly an EZD Y12, whatever that is. I don't even know what that airplane is. And as you see, as you go up, this becomes a little more complex, right? Pretty sure I got that pretty much figured out. Where's our 737s? These are a great example. Uh, geez, where's the 737s? All oh, those, they're one down, that's why. Uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding this. Eric, do me a favor. Uh, throw it down there. Uh, 
Oh, there's 12 training flights for the private pilot level? Fantastic. <laughs> Throw it down here in the chat for me, Eric. Uh, I, I, am I understanding this right? So it's not this way. It's it's vertical, right? So I can fly any of these aircraft for any of these flights. That doesn't make sense, though. Obviously, I need to hash that out. Let me just clarify something here. My man Eric is the driving force behind this thing. I put in as much time as I can, but he knows every last detail. He knows every last detail of this thing. Uh, once we can figure out the, the actual substitution chart, so those are just uh, example registrations is what he's saying. He says you can fly any aircraft under each category, which is partially right. But if you have a flight in a 737-700, you can't fly an A324 in the professional division. It doesn't work that way. You're going to have to fly a different 737 that's capable of making the flight. So I'm sure that's outlined uh, better on the actual substitution chart. Hold on, because I know that's Eric texting me right now. He wants me to go on TS, which my team speak isn't working. But I'll try it. Anyway, are, are we having fun yet? This is probably the, the most confused and baffling uh, live stream we've ever had. Okay. All right, I'm going to talk to Eric for a second, guys. What's up, man? Okay, you're saying it's vertical, but, but that, won't, that won't work for like 737s and A320s. So... Yeah, we'll, we'll have to figure that out. Okay, not a big deal. Uh, let me mute my microphone so he doesn't hear me twice. Okay, so obviously there's still going to be a few bugs that need to be worked out. Okay, never mind. i got to turn this off because it's beeping in my ear now. Uh, we got to work out a couple little things. Not a big deal because it's going to be a little while before you can fly the professional division anyway. Let's talk about it, though. Getting back over to what's actually going on with the professional division. See, this is what happens when I don't script things, right? I never script things, by the way, in case you're wondering. Either way, uh, once you get into the professional division, once you do your training flights and you've passed your check ride, you can fly single engine fixed pitch propeller aircraft. Now, <clears throat> your next level up is going to be your instrument pilot. This requires 10 hours as a private pilot, first of all. So you have to fly 10 hours as a private pilot. Okay. You have to take another written exam, pass with 85%, and then you'll do some training flights and then you'll have a check ride. Again, and you have to pass the check ride. All right. In order to advance from here, you're going to need 20 hours, all right? And in this case, so the aircraft in the instrument division are, um, come on, brain function, uh, f constant speed propellers. And if you don't know what a constant speed propeller is, guess what? You're not ready for the professional division. So you'll have access to aircraft that have constant speed propellers, such as a Cessna Caravan, Piper Arrow, or a Cessna 180, just as some examples. And you can fly aircraft from the private pilot division. Now, here's the kicker, though. You have to fly 20 hours of logged flight time as an instrument pilot in order to advance. In other words, let's just say I did 18 hours as a private pilot before I took my check ride. Okay, and then I take my check ride, I go into the uh, instrument, uh, I get my instrument rating, and now I want to take my, uh, my written and my check ride for the next level up, which is going to be multi-engine pilot. I can't, I, I can't just fly two hours as an instrument pilot. I must fly 20 hours as an instrument rated pilot before I can apply for the next rating. And that's it's the same all the way through. So the hours requirement is the hours that are required at that rank, not total hours. It's important that everybody understands that. All right. So then it's a multi-engine pilot after that. Okay. So you got your 20 hours as an instrument pilot. You're going to take a written exam. You're going to take a check right after doing some training flights. And then you need to fly 50 hours as a multi-engine pilot in your Beechcraft King Air. Your dash 8 q 400 and so on and what I really like part of the reason I set this up this way is you know 30 hours is a lot of flight time <clears throat> but for this division it's really not and I wanted you to be able to get into complex aircraft as soon as possible without jumping you all the way up to you know 737s and stuff really quickly because that's not how it works in the real world well there's you know some great King Airs out there uh, flight one makes the King Air uh, Super 200 which is fantastic everybody knows about the Majestic Dash 8 extremely complex aircraft so you can get into complex flight by the time you hit multi-engine which is only you know uh, 
probably 35 hours of total flight time when you include your training flights all right and you can start flying complex aircraft early on but you're still going to have to fly 50 hours of flight time as a multi-engine pilot before you can uh, request an advancement up from there and you can see right here uh, I even put in there we highly recommend that by the time you reach this point in your professional vision career that you've acquired at least one complex aircraft add-on it's not a requirement just a recommendation because if you really want to do well in the professional division you're gonna want to have aircraft that require knowing procedures and knowing what you're doing complex aircraft right so moving on next after that is your commercial pilot rating all right, and this is gonna this is gonna allow you to fly CRJ series aircraft, ERJ series, E jets, Lear jets, all of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, don't count on Aerosoft ever releasing that CRJ 200. It's probably not gonna happen. But you've all seen me fly the ERJs and the E jets. They're actually pretty good. So you can get some complex aircraft there. And you're probably gonna want them because you're gonna have a hundred hours of flight time in these aircraft. So, Lord willing, maybe at some point. Uh, we will see a release from Aerosoft to that CRJ. It would be fantastic. But in the meantime, uh, you're going to have to fly 100 hours here before you can request advancement. Of course, you still have to take your written exam and your check ride to get started. And then moving on from commercial pilot to airline transport pilot second officer. Once again, you're going to take a written exam. Got to pass with 85% or higher. Then you're going to take a check ride via team viewer with an examiner. And then you're going to fly 250 hours as an airline transport pilot second officer of course by this point you're into your 737 aircraft your a320 aircraft all right and so these you've got pmdg 737 ngx you've got uh, aerosoft a320 series and for those of you who really like it you've got the fs labs a320 and so on so there's a lot of great aircraft to fly in there and getting 250 hours for most folks at this point it's not going to be too hard I would say the 100 hours of time as a commercial pilot is going to be the longest grind on this road here. I can tell you that for sure because I, I did a lot of, I, in fact, I think it was 100 hours I had to do uh, with PVA at that at uh, the first officer rank or whatever that was flying those aircraft. <coughs> Got to get a Captain Matt Coff in there, right? And then, of course, from there, it's on up to airline transport pilot first officer. Again, written exam, 85% or higher some training flights then a check ride and then you're gonna fly 500 hours of flight time as an ATP first officer now this is a great time to take a step back and realize that I'm not limited to the aircraft for ATP first officer I can also fly aircraft for ATP second officer commercial pilot and so on all the previous aircraft and schedules I have access to okay but I don't have access to whatever's above this rank. That's how it works. That's how we've got it set it up. That's how we've got it set up. In this, uh, in, at this rank for as an ATP first officer, you've got access to your 757, 767. Quality Wings 787 is supposed to release this summer. They said it's releasing this summer, so that gives us what about another two, two and a half months before we should see that 787 come out. And I'm really looking forward to that airplane. That thing looks. Oh, they've been putting some work in it too. I'd also really love to see a great A350 come out. I know there's a good one for X plane. Those of you who fly X plane, you can fly it with us. Um, but I don't think anybody's made a good one for FSX or P3D. So, and then on from there, it's up to the uh, airline transport captain okay so the way this works now this is where it gets kind of a little strange so you've got to have your 500 hours of logged flight time as a first officer you're gonna take a written exam you're gonna do some training flights then you're gonna take a check ride and now you're an ATP captain okay and there's no more hours after this because you've reached the highest rank sort of I'll get to that in a second uh, and you have all aircraft available so your 747s your A380s and so on you can fly all of those when you get to ATP captain now to get to this point you're gonna fly somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand hours of flight time in the professional division remember this division is not for everybody so some of you are right now you're probably watching this and you're saying you're out of your freaking mind if you think I'm gonna fly a thousand hours just so I can fly a 747 that's fine don't worry about it it's not an issue you don't have to fly in the professional division and the beauty of it is even better is if you want to take a run at the professional division let's say you get to a multi-engine and you are just burnt out and you're like man I just I want to hop in that 747 I'm really just burnt out go on over to the open division and fly over there 
your your career is not going to get stopped or removed. You're not going to be put in retirement or anything like that for not flying in this division. The requirement is to do one flight every 30 days for Mac Air. It doesn't matter what division you do that flight in as long as you do a flight. So go on over to the open division and fly some other aircraft around for a while and eventually you know once you, once you get over that burnout and you want to come back and go at it some more, go at it some more. So some people it's going to take them a long time to get through the pro division. Other people are going to say I love this man I'm going to keep trucking away and they'll go for it. Now as a bonus any pilot that reach, reaches the rank of ATP captain and flies an additional thousand hours as at that rank or as an ATP captain you'll get basically a uh, what, I, what I label it in here uh, it says given the rank of professional examiner so it's basically a, a special rank so there won't there probably won't be very many people for a long time that will reach the rank of professional examiner but if you fly an additional thousand hours after reaching the rank of ATP captain, you'll be given the honorary rank of professional examiner and we're probably going to ask you if you'd like to be an examiner on the staff to help with other people going through the professional division. So that's something to keep in mind and that's certainly a goal to shoot towards. And uh, that rank insignia doesn't show up. We'll show you the rank insignias here in a little bit. That rank insignia doesn't show up because it's going to be a long time before anybody gets to it, but when it does, it's going to be different than what we got on there right now. So just keep that in mind. So make sure you read through all of this. Uh, I basically went over all the hours, but there's a lot of other information in here. I'm not going to read all this to you, but you need to read all of this. And then once you're done, go ahead and confirm that you've read it over here now when you confirm that you've read this if you fail to abide by these rules if you fail to abide by what's written here then you are subject to the virtual punishments in here just like a, a real world company there's disciplinary action in the professional division so and I and it's outlined in here so I'm not I'm not even gonna find it and read it to you just understand that if you don't follow the rules of the professional division there are actions that the airline may take against you so please keep that in mind and remember the professional division is not for everyone okay so I'm gonna submit my application there it is and it's been submitted so now when I click on professional division it says the status is pending and I'm sure Eric because he's watching this right now he's getting ready to approve my application but I'm not gonna do the test right now because I don't want you guys to see it and you'll know the answers and eventually we'll have more questions in there as well so that's our professional division let's hop back over here to our profile page real quick go to the divisions page and take a look at the historical division and I'm gonna go ahead and apply for this one as well same thing a lot of information written down in here nowhere near as much because the professional professional division is very similar to the open division with a few changes so make sure you read through this and understand how the professional or I'm sorry how the uh, historical division is set up because it's not quite as free as the open division is remember the open division you fly what you want when you want where you want from wherever you want at any time it doesn't matter in the historical division however it's a little bit different you can't just hop in any airplane and go anywhere you want from any location you want there's a little bit more structure to it so keep that in mind as well same thing confirm that you've read and agree to these terms and conditions okay and then submit your application and there you go so now I've got my applications in for the professional and the historic division and I think we've covered the pro division pretty well now let me take a look over here and see if anybody's had any questions so far uh, let's see Clutch Crunch, thank you. I think it's fantastic. I'm really excited about it. Uh, we've already got folks signing up. All applications will be verified on Tuesday, July 4th. So if you put in an application already, that's perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable. We really look forward to having you join us, but we've already set the uh, official launch date as the 4th of July. Obviously, we're an, uh, an American-based airline, and that's an important day here in the United States. So it's going to be on the 4th of July. And in fact, uh, I'll have uh, Eric put in here. Eric, uh, every few minutes, do me a favor and put in there, uh, in the chat down here, the information for the group flight on the 4th of July so if you're signing up right now your application will be approved on the 4th of July and there's going to be a big group flight in conjunction with Mirage executive charters to uh, uh, celebrate the launch of Mac Air so uh, Pat thank you very much it definitely was a lot of hard work uh, Nim yes this will absolutely be available to watch later I'm gonna post it on my YouTube channel just as I always do what do I recommend for student pilots you're gonna have to clarify what you mean by that you mean student pilots in the real world um, or or what uh, because uh, let me just add to this um, we've got uh, a series hopefully coming up where we're gonna be teaching somebody how to fly 
and you're going to see her walk by back there. So the idea is going to be uh, taking that lady back there, my wife, from zero time, no experience flying whatsoever, and teaching her how to fly an aircraft one step at a time. So uh, we don't know when we're going to do that yet, but when we do, that's going to be uh, that's going to be some great lessons because it's going to it's going to be broken down as realistically as possible. That's going to be the idea. So if you're looking for something like that, some type of lessons or something please stand by for that <laughs> I don't know how else to put that uh, let's see do 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 student pilots in the real world uh, so here's the skinny as far as student pilots in the real world go my stupid watch keeps going off um, I would recommend to us uh, absolutely our professional division because you're going to have to, f you know, you're going to have to learn stuff about real world flight in the professional division anyway. So you're definitely going to want to spend some time in there if you want to be able to take what you learn in the real world and apply it to your flight sim or what you learn uh, on your flight sim and apply it to the real world. Professional division is definitely the way to go. Keep in mind though, you got to fly 25 hours in one of the other divisions first. So, and for those of you that like to fly the old iron, don't hesitate to put your application in for the historical division right away because you don't have to fly any hours before you can apply for that one so what else we got here all right let's jump back over to our home page here real quick uh, there is an error on here we haven't been up for a, a year and 62 days it's actually been 62 days or, or thereabouts that the website has actually been up and running so uh, you know, I just noticed this one's fantastic right here. Uh, so newest pilots, you can see them lining up here. This is my sister. <laughs> it is. I, I'm not kidding. That's my sister right there. I don't know if she's on the chat. You know what? She is on the chat. That's who. That's who Nim is. That. That's who Nim is on the chat. <laughs> that's why she said to tell Robin hi. Uh, everybody say hi to my sister Melissa that's uh, NIM 050381 everybody say hi to her real quick and this is her signed up right here so everybody say hi to Melissa and welcome her this is her first time ever watching one of my live streams and uh, she's actually getting ready to go to flight school here pretty soon so that's pretty fantastic and she wanted to jump in here and become a part of what we got going on here so took me a minute to figure out who that was <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, here we go. So this is wrong, but we got all kinds of stuff going on here. You can see our newest pilots. You can go straight to division schedules from here. Just click on division schedules and then click on which division you want to go to. So historic division, you can see we are registered now, right? And my current location is Leonardo da Vinci Airport. So I click on view schedules. And this is what I love about uh, the way the professional and historical division schedules are set up. This only shows flights that are leaving the airport I'm currently at right now there is a way to get a jump seat okay and I'm not going to go into that right here because it's written in the pilot operating handbook and in other places so make sure you read the information so you understand how jump seats work but if I wanted I could fly out of here in a Douglas DC-7 or any uh, equivalent aircraft on the substitution chart I could add that to my bid and off I go alright so good uh, good to know that and when you're in the professional division when you once you get uh, your private pilot rank in the professional division it will list all flights from your current location in aircraft that you are certified to fly so you shouldn't see A320s popping up in there or something like that now if for some reason there's an error in the website which I think we've uh, we've pretty much got all the bugs worked out but if there's an error in there <clears throat> and you're a private pilot and you see a flight available in a 737 don't take that flight your pi your pi rep's going to be rejected, and you're just gonna, you're just going to end up getting yourself <laughs> into trouble. Okay, so you know if you see if you see an error like that, do me a favor, go into the forums, make sure you report it to us so that we can get on it with the developer as fast as possible. Uh, the only pilots online, of course, myself and Eric right now. There's recent bids. This is you know pretty standard layout as far as. Uh, you know your home page goes we do have links down here for our Facebook Twitter Instagram and YouTube and this is for the Mac Air YouTube channel and I'm gonna see if we can't maybe add a link in there for my YouTube channel because why not right um, you got a donate button down here listen it does cost money to run this thing if you can donate we'd always appreciate it if you can't don't worry about it you're still more than welcome to join us here at Mac Air recent flights all listed down here you've got a pending pirate from Eric right now 
Shows your landing rate. Landing rates are going to be pretty darn important when it comes to Mac Air, especially in the professional division. Make sure you read the pilot operating handbook and all those rules that are outlined when you first uh, go to uh, apply for the professional division. All right, let's move across the way here. Let's go to corporate. This is just our pilots. I'm not going to pull this one up right now. I mean, you can see most of their names right here anyway, but we've got, uh, you know, if you want to see what pilots are, are active at Mac Air, you click on that. Ranking structure, we'll take a look here. So you can see that we've got a lot going on here because we've got three divisions so this is your open division ranking structure we'll start with this guy right here all right so you start out as a pilot in training with zero hours you can fly whatever you want okay but at zero hours you're a pilot in training you need to fly 25 hours before you become a first officer so you have to be a first officer or equivalent down below in the historical division we'll get to that before you're allowed to apply for that professional division then it's 75 hours a captain 100 hours a senior captain and so on it goes all the way up if you want now if you fly just the open division you can still reach the rank of examiner at 3000 hours all right and if you reach that rank of examiner and you'd like to uh, try and apply for a position as an examiner with Mac Air, we'd be more than happy to take your application and take a look at your flying. So that's our open division ranking structure. Now you look down here, you see professional division type ratings. Now at first this probably seems a little confusing because when you think of type ratings, you think of being type rated in a Cessna 172 or type rated in a Boeing 737. And we're going to have those eventually. That's one of the expansions we want to do with our professional division. But the amount of work that goes into getting a type rating uh, set up for a single aircraft is substantial. So for example, a Cessna 172, if we're going to do a type rating in that aircraft, we have to have... Uh, a pretty substantial test that outlines uh, you know 50 or 100 different aspects of a Cessna 172 and you've got to take a test and you've got to pass that test and then we've got to have some training flights that are very specific to flying a Cessna 172 and then we have to create an exam that is that is specifically centered around the Cessna 172 in order for you to get a type rating excuse me in a Cessna 172 right Okay, it's substantially harder when you get to aircraft like a Boeing 737. So if I want to take PMDG 737 and I want to create a type rating for that, the manual is, what is it, 800 pages or something like that? There's a lot of information to cover, right? So what that means is someone like myself or Eric or perhaps we create a staff position to start, uh, in fact, that's a good idea. Maybe we'll create a staff position to start creating type ratings for a specific aircraft because it's going to require somebody to read through every page of that manual okay every single page of that manual and then you still got to grab the manual for say the iFly 737 or the Captain Sim 737 you got to read through those and find where there's variances right and then create a test probably create a study guide of course you should have you should be able to study just by reading the manual but create a test and then we need to create training flights and then we need to create a check ride and that check ride has got to be very inclusive it's got to include emergency procedures it's got to include a full startup it's got to, it's got to include everything you're talking you're talking an exam for a type rating in a Boeing 737 is going to probably be a two-hour exam right that's that's the flight exam that doesn't even include the written and all the other stuff so we don't have those yet but we are going to get those eventually that's our intent and keep in mind that any type ratings for specific aircraft are going to be required to be flown in a complex add-on aircraft so for example using the 737 again you'll be required to either use the PMDG or the iFly I know that uh, Captain Sim has a 737-200 but that would technically be a different type rating because the systems are a little bit different since it uses analog versus glass cockpit the point being though is you're not going to do a type rating for a 737 in a default Boeing uh, from FSX. It's not going to happen, so don't ever ask. We're not going to allow it. <laughs> but eventually we will have type ratings for specific aircraft. In the meantime, the way our professional division is laid out, each of our ranks is also a type rating. So for private pilot, you must meet all the requirements and it shows you some of the aircraft covered and so on. Instrument, multi-engine, commercial, ATP, second, first, and captain. And it shows you aircraft that you can fly at those ranks. And keep in mind that if I'm an ATP first officer, I can fly these, 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 and these. Everything below my rank is available to me, nothing above my rank. We've also got our actual rank structure for the professional division. You can see we went with something substantially different here because our professional division is substantially different than what anybody else has going on. So these are your rank structure for your professional division. 
these are from probably I think from some sci-fi thing or something like that but I think they look pretty cool so uh, I think that's pretty awesome hold on I'm getting a text from Eric here <laughs> pro sub chart has been edited is that on the forums Eric that you edited it so here's your, anyway here's your rank structure all the way up to uh, ATP captain and then what's not on here is professional examiner and that'll be a rank that will be created something similar to this but with something special uh, when the time comes and somebody actually reaches that rank and then we go down here to our historic division I love this rank structure for the historic division uh, we thought long and hard about what to actually title the ranks we wanted to make it something a little bit different uh, so you know going all the way back to the early early days of aviation and even though we don't actually go that far back because there weren't established routes and stuff like that and there aren't a lot of good aircraft out there for like an old Jenny or something like that you know they're freeware but they're not so great so anyway uh, you've got a different different ranking structure here observer admirer enthusiast mechanic uh, intern pilot navigator second officer first officer captain and then training captain and you got to get all the way up to 500 hours for that and again keep in mind that these hours are only built in historic aircraft so it's going to take a little bit longer e even the even the older jets take a little bit longer to build up hours in those and so on er uh, Eric is a text and fool right now so but anyway so there's your rank structure for your historical division as well and then when you earn each of these ranks you have this available as a badge and I think we've set it up so that you can put those ranks in your signature uh, on the forums as well so that's pretty cool so there's your rank structure don't forget about the type rating keeping in mind current type ratings are related strictly to the ranking system for the professional division but eventually you'll see other type ratings in here that are related to specific aircraft as well and those are going to be a big challenge so I look forward to the day that we get those set up still under the corporate here uh, we've got our awards section there's just a few awards in here so any pilot who achieves uh, 100 hours of flight time little ribbon here 250 hours 500 hours 1000 hours and these are just some uh, general awards that again can go into your uh, signature block on your um, on your come on brain function on your uh, forum signature and then you've got uh, your professional pilot ranking system again because those are set up as awards and then the Independence Day fly-in. This is our uh, launch flight on July 4th. So if you're able to uh, join in on the launch flight and you record it on A cars, which you should be doing anyway, uh, you'll get this little badge here. Happy Independence Day, and that can also go uh, in your forum. So there you go. Uh, what else? Finances. Everybody's got their finances showing. Uh, the books are at 105 grand right now, and we're slowly working our way up. So. Pretty straightforward there if you ever want to see what our balance sheet is and then some contact us you know you can go in here and of course it would be me my email address and then all that information and then that will go directly to one of us and then from there you can uh, we'll, we'll obviously reply back to you uh, we've already looked at schedules there they are these are applications all right so these are the number of so we've some of these were tests that's why they were rejected but it just lists out the applications but that's that's one way to get to the schedules you can go operations schedules you can go from the home page just go to division schedules or you can go from your profile page and click on divisions and it takes you to the schedules page so it's, it's not hard to find the schedules at all so uh, tours we've got a couple tours set up already so those of you, many of you may remember that I've been doing uh, live stream series flying over, uh, flying the hump, uh, or over the hump, flying the hump, whatever it's called, and uh, we haven't finished that. We got a long way to go. But what we've done here is we've gone ahead and created our first few company tours, are recreating those flights as well, and you can see they're all scheduled in here. You can click on the details. We need to get some more images in there and so on. That's a cool picture though. I like that one, and it gives you all the flights listed down here what pilots have already started it, what their progress is and so on so uh, if you want to fly tours something to give you a little more direction with either your historical or your open division there will be open division tours as well uh, we may even create some professional division tours eventually but uh, those will be a little tougher and then we put a good one in here uh, the, M the captain's MD 11F global tour this is going to take you to all kinds of cool places probably some that you've never been to and because the MD 11 is not available from PMDG anymore sadly um, we've gone ahead and we've allowed us the substitution of the Boeing 747 freighter since obviously it's not too hard to get one of those so you can fly this in either the MD 11 F or the 747 F so that's pretty cool and then of course we'll have more tours as we go along we'll start adding more to those and so on 
Uh, let's see, fleet. We've got a very, very, very large fleet. Okay, so basically this is this just lays them out in order, and this goes on. I'll just drag it over here. You can see there are a lot of aircraft. We've got over 3,000 aircraft in our fleet, and you can see that even with uh, the guys who've joined us early, the guys who helped us get everything set up, most of these aircraft have not been flown yet. So, uh, but if an aircraft's been flown, you can click on here to get its last flight. And this was Andreas, and uh, this is all his flight information. So just if you're interested where the aircraft's been and so on, you can do that. And then our hubs. This is something that we spent a lot, a lot of time thinking about, and we wanted to do something substantially different than what everybody, I mean, we're already, everything we do is different. So we went different with our hubs, too. We're a different airline. So Atlanta, there's some people that have Atlanta as their hub. Um, Phoenix, because... I live in Phoenix, people. Come on now. And I've been trying to get Phoenix as a hub forever. And Phoenix is actually our training hub as well. So you'll find as you go through the professional division, all uh, check rides, everything, it all comes out of Phoenix. Everything comes out of Phoenix. So you might want to get to know Phoenix pretty well. Uh, San Francisco, I, I imagine there's a couple of pe couple airlines, a few airlines out there that have that as a hub. But we wanted to go and throw that one in there as well. But this is where it get, definitely gets different. We've got Barcelona International as a hub. Thessaloniki, uh, Thess how do you say it? Thessalon Thessaloniki, Laniki, I can't even say it, but that's in Greece. So, and for those of you who don't know, that's famous because of the Spartans, the 300 Spartans, and so on. And so we chose that as a hub. Innsbruck is one of our hubs. So, for those of you who are big fans of LOWI, Innsbruck is a hub for Mac Air. And then uh, the Ninoy Aquino International Airport as well. And then you can click on these. So, this is my hub. And if I click on the link right here, and of course my internet's being slow, that's that's the airport right there. And it gives you the longitude and latitude. Looks like one of our pictures crapped out. By the way, for those of you who don't know, I guess PhotoBucket decided here recently that uh, if you want to embed images from PhotoBucket to websites like ours, they're going to charge you $400 a year now. <laughs> <laughs> They're smoking crack. So either way, it doesn't really matter because uh, we've got other sites that we can use. But here you go. You get some statistics on it, how many pilots are stationed here, how many flights have been flown, and so on and so forth. Um, I thought this was, my, this was my hub, but apparently it's not. I'll have Eric move me. I want this to be my hub. He probably put me in Phoenix, though. <laughs> uh, Eric and Stuart are both there at this hub. So there you have it. You can get information on each hub by doing that. So different hubs, different atmosphere, different layout for the entire virtual airline. Uh, live map is just what it sounds like. So if anybody was in the air right now, you click on live map. And let's see who we got here. Click on the name. That's Eric. He's already landed. And so you can just take a look at who's flying where and doing what, right? Everybody knows how the live map works. If you don't, then you probably haven't flown virtual airlines before, and this whole thing is going to be a fun experience for you. Resources, that's your download center. I highly recommend taking advantage of this. I'm not sure why there was an issue with that substitution chart. I'm pretty sure I downloaded it before, and it worked fine. But either way, you can download them here. Make sure uh, you download and set up ACARS. You can set that up before your application gets approved. So for those of you who are already signed up and just waiting for application approvals to come in on the uh, 4th of July, you can go ahead and get your ACARS all set up, get the information on the flights, and uh, you'll be good to go. All right. So make sure you go to the download center. Down, please, I'm begging you, download the Pilot Operations Handbook and read it, please, especially for the professional division, all right, and then download these substitution charts, and again, we'll go into the back into the forums here shortly, and you'll, you'll be able to look at those. Uh, we've already seen the profile page. One more time, though, you got real quick links right here, so it, my hub is LGTS, actually, so I'm not really sure... Uh, not really sure why it didn't show me in there. Ooh, interesting. Okay, well, Eric sees that, and I know he'll be all over it, so I'm not worried about it. But anyway, basic information, you can set up your signature, statistics on your flights, change your password, edit your profile, so on and so forth. Open division statistics, everybody will have these right out the gate. All right, awards, anything like that. Professional division, you can see I am I now have information in here for the professional division because Eric went in and accepted my application. And the same thing down here for the historical division. You can see my, I have the first rank in there already. It tells me how many hours I have until promotion and so on. You can get a map of your flights, all that good stuff, right? So if I go back over to, uh, let's, I think you go to, 
let's do it this way let's go to divisions professional division all right and it says you're registered and no schedules available you have to complete at least one type rating to fly into this division and I forget actually how, how do we get to the type rating there Eric oh it's right here I gotta request it duh so here you see his type ratings private pilot instrument multi-engine so they're all listed down here now you can see I, it's been a few days since I've gone in here uh, so now I can request private pilot right okay and you get your little uh, your little description here tells you what aircraft are assigned and then once you're sure you're ready to proceed with your type rating click the button below okay so I submit request I have to do this I've requested I've applied for the division we verified that I had the hours of course I didn't have the hours but I'm the president of the company so I get to go into the professional division without 25 hours um, but once once your application is approved go in here and then click on uh, the request and then once that's done you can click on more information and there you go you haven't taken any theoretical check ride yet okay so we we're not going to take a check ride till we're done here's the training right but this right here this is your theoretical exam this is your written exam we're not going to do it right now because I don't want you to see the questions right and then this is your practical check ride okay I don't know what we probably should change that from theoretical check ride to just theoretical exam but either way the point is is once you go back in here you click on start now it's going to take you to the test you're going to answer the questions it's going to grade it for you immediately if you pass great if you don't you'll have to resubmit simple as that and then these are going to be these are the training flights that are available to you okay notice it says complete theoretical check ride and again I want to change that to exam but I can't bid on any of these flights yet you can't bid on them until you pass the written test once I pass the written test, then I can come in here and I can bid on any one of these flights and I can fly them for training. These are training flights. That's the whole purpose of these. Okay. And then once I've gotten some training in, and I recommend you fly all of them, you might as well, then I'll be able to go down here and I'll have the ability to request a check ride. Okay. Hopefully everybody's tracking on that. Uh, we don't need to edit profile or anything like that. Admin is for me, and we're not going to log out. So let's go back over to the forums now. And let's go to the forums. Uh, home page here and you can see now the admin stuff you guys won't have access to that because you're not administration obviously I am but you're gonna have all kinds of information here important pilot documents again this is where you're gonna find your pilots operating handbook uh, for the uh, open division uh, th that's just your general pilots operation handbook and then of course you're gonna have your professional division and your professional di division aircraft substitution chart which will go in here and this should be updated now and let's see uh, I think we need to okay so this is the way this is supposed to work here this is this this makes more sense to me now so here's how it works if you if you have a flight in a CRJ 200 you can fly any of the aircraft on this line make sense simple as can be if your flight is in a CRJ 1000 you can fly any aircraft on this line okay if your flight's in a CRJ 900, you cannot fly an E-170 because it's not on the same line. Does that make sense to everybody? I'm pretty sure that does. And that's that's the way it goes all the way down. So your 737, 737, 200, 300, 400, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, all right here. Right? They're all on the same line. So I can fly, if I have a flight in a 737, I can fly it in any 737 as long as it'll make the flight. Keep in mind that a 737-200 will not go as far as a 737-700. <laughs> uh, same thing for the A3, A3 this, is, this is called the A320 series. That's the 18, 19, 20, uh, which is in there twice, interestingly enough, and the 21. And then the A300 series is these guys right here. So if it's on the same line, you can fly any one of those aircraft. If there's only one aircraft listed, you got to fly that airplane, folks. That's the way it works in the professional division, all right? Uh, other than that, forums are pretty straightforward. Uh, somewhere in here, here we go. Millennium Aviation Forum Rules. You better read this before you start posting in our forums because I'm going to tell you right now, my man Eric, he don't play around. <laughs> if, you, if you're not following the forum rules, you're probably going to get one warning and then you're going to get booted. And the reason is very simple. We've all, all of us have been with virtual airlines, or most of us have. Eric and I have been with several of them, and the forums can become a disaster sometimes. All right, and some of the stuff people say is just unacceptable. So you've got your your guidelines in here, prohibited conduct, and so on. Listen, make sure you guys stick with the rules in here. Come in here and read these. Make sure you understand what information uh, is is laid out in here. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact one of us, and uh, we'll get you squared away on it. Okay. 
and then you've got all kinds of other stuff in here so we've got uh, add-on excuse me add-on scenery links uh, staff position availabilities so if we've got staff positions available we'll post them in here and the information on how to apply for them staff announcements and news information for our team speak server multiplayer platform information team viewer download link this one's important if you want to fly in the professional division uh, and then on we go new pilot introduction so one, once you guys get in here and you're uh, approved on July 4th please come in and introduce yourself in the in the new pilot introductions uh, say you know give us a little information about yourself we we understand that some people are not big on uh, on participating in the forums but we really want you to try and participate the idea is to have a community we want a community of online pilots who get an opportunity to fly together learn from each other and have a good time that's what this is all about so please take the opportunity take the time go in here introduce yourself and just get in the forums once in a while see what's going on don't hesitate to ask questions uh, if you know the answer to a question make sure that uh, you know don't be a jerk when you answer I hate when people do that okay um, but you know the idea is to have a good time time to you know to enjoy each other's company and so on uh, general discussion uh, scheduling discussion so this one here um, so here's the deal the, the probably the main reason this is set up I guarantee so and there's nothing in here right now somebody's gonna be going through here and you're looking for a flight and it's just not available okay go in here and throw it in the forums real quick create a new thread and say hey I wanted to fly this flight in this aircraft here's the route uh, I didn't find it in your schedules which would be kinda hard considering we have 350,000 flights but either way go ahead and put it in here and we'll add it it's as simple as that it's, it's really not that big of a deal actually um, what else the same thing goes for aircraft and aircraft substitutions. So I remember a while back at a different virtual airline, there was a big debate over whether or not the Airbus A320 series and the 737 series should be uh, be able to be substituted with each other. Well, ultimately the answer is no because they're completely different aircraft. Okay, but there was also a similar debate about whether or not you could substitute an A318 for an A320 or vice versa and uh, you know some airlines don't allow that they say well if it's an A318 then that's a different aircraft than the A320 and so you can't fly it and so on uh, we're not quite that strict on our aircraft substitutions but just keep in mind if you have a question or a suggestion or a request regarding aircraft and aircraft substitutions and so on please come into the forums let us know now we're gonna address it we're gonna look at it and we're gonna make a determination uh, Eric and I'll talk about it and we'll also talk about it with our director of hub operations which is Abar and we're gonna come to a decision we expect that once we make that decision you're simply that that you accept it whether you agree with our decision or not ultimately is not the issue the issue is that are we actually taking the time to take a look at what you're asking and 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 really address the issue so and that's what we'll do we'll address it but we may not agree with you maybe you think there should be a substitution and we look at it and we say yeah that just doesn't we don't we don't think that works and so once we make a decision we ask that you respect that decision let's not have arguments about it and stuff like that uh, pilot awards uh, this is where we'll announce awards for pilots and stuff like that real-world aviation discussion it's pretty straightforward right it's real world aviation go in there to discuss real world real world aviation uh, hardware and computer stuff if you want to talk about your your setup please put it in here if you have questions about hardware or software or something like that this is a great place to do it uh, aviation humor off-topic discussions this is our training department uh, so we don't have any training videos or anything right now but eventually we're gonna have them I have to make the videos and as you all know by now especially those of you who follow me on YouTube there's a lot of work that goes into it and I'm already behind on my videos as it is so just bear with us but eventually we will have lots of training videos and stuff like that in there general aviation training and support uh, it's my hope that in addition to uh, flight simulation training that for those of you such as my sister who uh, want to fly in the real world that I can maybe help a little bit I'm not an instructor so you know I can give some advice I can you know I can tell you where to find information uh, stuff like that but I, I'm limited in what I what I'll actually say in here I do want to be able to help out though for real world aviation uh, where I can for those of you who don't know I do have a pilot's license but I don't get to fly very much I fly more on here than I do in the real world which is kind of a shame but I definitely want to be able to help out just keep in mind I'm not a flight instructor and therefore um, I'll be try to be very careful about what I say because in reality a flight instructor uh, is the one who teaches you to fly right 
Uh, and uh, let's see what else we got here. On it goes. Uh, this is information for the tours and so on. Uh, pilot screenshots and stories. So Eric set all this up, and you can see he put tons of. There's so many different forums in here. Uh, you, you could probably spend a, a, a week in here just trying to go through everything and see what's here. So, and you can see we got quite a few posts going on and stuff already. So, um, you do have to sign up for the forum separately from the. Uh, virtual airline itself so just keep that in mind and it is a requirement you must create an account in the forums as a pilot for Mac Air now you may not interact in the forums very much we're not going to beat you to death over that but uh, you have to sign up for forums if you don't sign up for the forums within 30 days of joining Mac Air your Mac Air pilot profile is going to be removed and then we'll ask you to reapply okay so please sign up in the forums introduce yourself after that if you're not a big forums guy that's alright not a big deal. We'd like to have you interact, but we're not going to make a huge deal out of it. All right. Uh, and I think that's just about the gist of it. That's that's uh, the bulk of what we got going on here. So I think what we want to do now. Let me take a look at the comments, and then uh, what I'd really like to see is any questions you guys have. Busted. <laughs> uh, let's see. It was it was kind of cool to see her name pop. My sister's name pop up on there. Ah. Uh, Oh, I think uh, he moved me to the right hub now. It's mandatory to complete all training flights for all type ratings. So what Eric's getting at there is all of those training flights must be completed before you can take your check ride. End of story. That's the way it's going to be, right? Easy enough. Uh, let's see. Are we, going, are we going to have documentation to read before the test in the Pro Division, or is it up to the pilot to find it? Uh, there's a pilot handbook. <coughs> Uh, but as far as document, there's not. We're not creating a study guide or anything like that. Now, I specifically, just so that you know, I I went online and I found real world uh, practice tests for real world aviation. That's where I got the questions from. So if you look into studying real world aviation, and I try to keep it predominantly basic. I didn't, even all the way up to ATP, I didn't go into really, you know, uh, high level, no kidding airline transport pilot. This is, this is what you got to know to be able to fly for, you know, American Airlines or FedEx or something like that. I didn't get all the way into the weeds on that stuff. All the way up through ATP, I tried to keep the questions somewhere closer to the realm of general and instrument aviation okay there are a few questions in there that are advanced but there's nothing you cannot figure out online okay so you're gonna need to study for that stuff on your own you're gonna need to look into it and here's the thing if you if if you if if you're going uh, if you're joining the professional division there's it's highly likely that uh, you know that that you already have a pretty good idea about aviation because this is this division's no joke and if you don't you probably want to learn about it so start reading up on it look for uh, practice tests online and stuff like that for real world pilot's license and you're gonna find the answers to the questions before you take that test so hopefully that answers your question what else we got on here uh, is the Mac Air a car similar to PVA's it's the only one I've used so I'm just curious so uh, Crunch, not right now, it's not. We're using uh, Smart Cars, uh, which is from TFDI. Uh, very, very simple to use, very easy. Matter of fact, uh, I can just show you the A cars here. Okay, let me shrink this down. And here's our Smart Cars. Okay, uh, my login information is going to be wrong. <laughs> Let's see. I thought I already redid this, but maybe not. Do, 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 do. So you log into your A cars, pretty straightforward. Don't mind all the mess on my computer. Let me move this off to the side and put our window back up here. And wait for that to log. You might not log me in right now. I think I need to reinstall it because we had to change my profile information after we were done testing. Either way, Smart Cars is very easy to use. Now that being said, I, I literally just got a message from Eric last night about the individual who created the A cars for uh, PVA, and it's going to be available for um, other airlines, other virtual airlines to use. I think here in the near future. So uh, Eric can clarify that down here. Uh, da -da, he's already doing that a little bit. Yeah, so next year we're going to be looking at a custom A car. So when that happens, when we get a custom A cars, just like I did with PVA, I'll do a tutorial on how to use A cars. Pretty simple. 
here's our eight cars very simple to use you guys have seen me use this before if you've watched any of my videos you've seen me use smart cars before it gives you your basic information any flights that you've been on are in here and then once you start your flight you've got your eight cars map chat all of that stuff and it's very straightforward very easy to use okay so um, if anybody really needs help with uh, using smart cars let me know and I'll take a look at doing a tutorial video on that but I don't think you're gonna need any help with it. it's very simple what else we got here uh, is this a Captain Mac virtual airline uh, Mephitic yes it is it's Mac Air and it is a Captain Mac and Eric Easy Cowl Flaps Grindstaff virtual airline. Eric and I have been good friends for years and we've built this airline together. So Millennium Aviation Company, uh, which for short is Mac Air. And uh, we went with that name because of my YouTube channel, Captain Mac, and uh, and a few other things. So it all worked out really well, actually. We went through, I think we went through two or three days of actually trying to decide on what the name of our virtual airline was going to be, and we ended up send it, settling on Millennium Aviation Company, which is a virtual airline group. So, uh, and you came in late, so you missed all kinds of stuff. But uh, yeah, Mephitic, definitely sign up. We'd appreciate it, and just know that uh, you can sign up today. But no applications will be approved until the fourth of July, which is going to be our launch date. Eric, can you do me a favor and throw in the chat down there uh, the flight information for the group flight on the fourth of July for anybody who's interested in flying it? And do we have any other questions about Mac Air? Mac Air uh, website or forums or anything like that or just general questions for Captain Mac because hey I'm here so why not right I'm waiting I'm getting nothing crickets is the logging tool better than the other TFDI product uh, if you're talking about our A cars yeah we've we've got our A cars is pretty darn good we don't have any issues with it so what else anything guys because otherwise we're going to be ending this live stream here shortly. <laughs> How long have we been at it anyway? Ooh, we've been at it quite a bit longer than I expected actually. I was expecting about an hour, but it's been, well, yeah, it's been a little over an hour, so it's not too bad. I'm getting nothing down there, guys. I think we're going to probably wrap this up. Once again, uh, macairvirtual.com. You can sign up today. Applications will be approved on the 4th of July. Don't forget, you need 25 hours of flight time in the open and or historical division combined is fine in order to be able to apply for the professional division and remember the professional division is not for everybody folks it is extremely strict and it's only going to get stricter as we go forward so please keep that in mind it is actually my goal to get to a point with our professional division where you must do a check ride for your rank and then you must do a type rating for your aircraft in order to fly that aircraft so for example as a private pilot you would have to also do a type rating in a Cessna 172 or a Piper Archer or something like that and then you would only have access to schedules in that airplane there wouldn't be substitution um, so it's going to continue to get stricter we do have all three divisions though so you don't have to fly in the professional division if you start the professional division and you need or want a break feel free to hop on over and fly in the open division or fly in the historical division you can come back to the pro division anytime you want there's no requirement to fly in a specific division every month but you must fly one flight with Mac Air every 30 days or you'll be uh, you'll be put on leave and then ultimately retired okay so please just remember that it doesn't matter what division it's in one flight every 30 days with Mac Air and I think that pretty much covers everything any other questions we got a few things on here so there's uh, there's the information there guys when's my next video Pat <laughs> Uh, I was hoping to do it this weekend and I didn't get a chance to so it's looking like next weekend I'm gonna make the next video uh, the event for the 4th of July is gonna be at 1600 GMT or Zulu time uh, using Mac Air TeamSpeak channel details available there um, FS Cloud is gonna be the multiplayer platform so that you can see each other's aircraft and so on. The flight's going to start at dawn sim time at EHRD Airfield in Rotterdam, and you're going to fly the route listed below, arriving at EGSU. Departure and arrival runways will be determined on the day of the flight, and so on and so forth. Any aircraft is, is eligible to use for the flight. So keep in mind that you want if you want credit for the flight so that you get the badge, you need to fly it on A cars. Okay, so you're going to bid this route in the open division 
and fly it in the open division because you can fly any aircraft you want and so on and so forth so uh, oh good point I forgot about that so when you join Mac Air you have 14 days to do your first flight if you do not do a flight in 14 days you will be automatically retired and you'll have to reapply in order to join if you miss that 14 day window or if you think you're gonna miss it you can contact Eric and then it'll be up to him and I whether or not to allow you an extension however if you miss the 14 day window and you get retired and you sign up again and then you miss the 14 day window again uh, we might not let you sign up again so make sure that you that if you're gonna miss that window you contact us but my recommendation is uh, you know July 4th is is when we officially launch if you do the if you do the group flight on July 4th you're good you've got your first flight in uh, if you're gonna wait to sign up which is perfectly fine I recommend signing up um, when you know you're gonna be able to fly within the next day or two keep in mind that all applications have to be approved manually we don't we don't uh, we don't have an auto approval system or anything like that so you gotta give us up to a day to be able to get through everything alright so just keep that in mind as well <coughs> what else we got on here uh, da -da -da -da. shaker long time no see my friend good to see you here I, 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 uh, I hope you're not watching this while you're driving he probably is he's probably watching while he's driving he's terrible wouldn't let you log in. I had to reset my password. Smash your phone. Yep, he's on his phone, which means he's driving. Which means Shaker is now having road rage because Twitch isn't working right, and he's driving down the road. <laughs> Everybody tell Shaker to stop it. <laughs> All right, any other questions, guys? Because we're about to wrap this one up. Going once. Going twice. Sold to the lady in the first row. Just kidding. All right, guys, I appreciate everybody coming on here. I hope that you guys are all as excited as I am. I know Eric and I are, are extremely excited about this. A lot of work went into it. A lot of, uh, not not just the actual labor of getting everything set up, but just uh, thinking through everything. We're open to suggestions all day long. Feel free to make suggestions, things that you think might improve upon the airline. Don't be all butthurt if we don't take your suggestion. That's just life sometimes, but... Uh, we look forward to uh, joining you all in the air and having a great time for many, many years to come at Mac Air Virtual. Thank you all once again for joining me today. Thank you all for your support here on Twitch, for your support on YouTube, and of course for your support over here at Mac Air Virtual now. I do appreciate it. As always, keep the blue side up unless otherwise instructed by ATC. God bless you all and have a fantastic day.